Hello everyone, Benevolent History here, and I'm here to give you a commentary battle on the grassy flatlands. Now, I can see here this is unlike my other my other of my videos. Um, this is a uh, this is a just a replay of this battle. I mean, um, I'm playing as Greek city states, and my opponent is a clan mate, a clan mate of mine, um, Julius. He he commands the uh, the people of Pontus. Now, essentially, um. Pontus is a Pontus is a chariot faction, so I I reto I um countered him by choosing Greece, a faction that has relatively strong infantry, you know those armored hoplites. Greece is also a good choice because um Greece has a lot of missiles. You can see here I brought four Cretes and Archers, and I also brought four Rhodian slingers in order to counter any um, in order to better my missile component, I also brought these light cavalry, these javelin, these jav cav, because um, light cavalry are way more useful in a fight against um, Pontus or any other chariot faction. Now you can see here, I put my men four hoplites in front, two hoplites in the re in reserve behind, so that so that I could um easily respond to any outflanking movements as you can see um, the battle begins apparently Julius has separated his forces into two one force is a mobile force comp consisting of two chariot archers two Cappadocian cav and I think three Pontic light cav um, Julius also brought six archers I think I believe like gold gold and also five bronze shield pikemen with his general in the bronze shield unit you can see he's right there anyway Julius qu quickly responds he sends out his um, cav he sends out his chariot archers and immediately does threatening movements on my flank so in response I send these Rhodian slingers up to my right flank in order to attack his chariot archers or to prevent his chariot archers from attacking me So, so you can see here, I sent my militia cab up to basically harass and um, give my Rhodian Slingers enough time to position, so that the ch so that um, my so that his chariot archers don't target my Slingers while these guys are just staying still. See that um, Julius also makes another um, threatening move by positioning all his infantry on my left flank, so that he'll force me to. Um, He'll force me to focus my troops over his infantry and over his chariots at the same time, so that I'm going to have to act very, very defensively. So you can see here, uh, Julius is doing a smart thing. He's not engaging my Rhodian Slingers head-on with his um with his chariot archers because he knows that my Rhodian Slingers will um he knows that my Rhodian Slingers will totally tear up all of his chariot archers very quickly because these Rhodian slingers they as with all slingers they fire in a way in which um, they could easily target and hit chariots even if the chariots are in um, Cantabrian circle because the archers just fire over over in an arc while the Rhodian slingers fire mainly straight See that he's sending one Cappadocian up. I found it interesting that um, Julius did not use any chariots against me. I I think that's a good move actually because um, because it, because he you don't really need to bring any chariots against Greece uh, because Greece has no heavy cav at all. Um, instead, if you're up against like a Pharynx faction. Um, it's best probably to bring these heavy cav instead. You can see Julius makes a threatening move with his bronze shields. Just puts them up in fangs formation, tight formation up in front. Just probably to um, threaten me. Although my armored hoplites are somewhat statistically superior, but though by not not by much. Anyway, you can see here that um, Julius is sending in his chariot archers, moving it a bit. Um, 
not by much actually. Just just make just inching his way forward right outside my Rodian Slinger range. That's quite annoying. It looks like I'm targeting his Cappadocian Cav. Yeah, it looks like a smart move by Julius said again. Uh, he's sending his heavy cav up so that my Ronian Slingers can just waste the ammo on his cav. I think I'm taking it. Uh, you know, in retrospect, I think I should have pushed up my Cretan Archers a bit. Yeah, you can see here now. I should have pushed up my Cretan Archers a bit. Cretan, Cretan Archers a bit. And I should have been more offensive in attacking his Archers. Because my Cretan Archers have better range in these regular archers and apparently um, Julius split his split his archer force in two two of his archers on this wing and four the other four archers over here I guess he's t trying to take advantage of the fact that um, I think he's trying to out micro me in the sense in the sense and I think he does so successfully in the fact that he's able to successfully push his archers up and go into range of my Cretan archers and sadly, I didn't put my Cretan Archers in fire at will, so they're just standing there kind of stupidly getting shot. Yeah, bad move by me. I also, I think I also make the mistake in the fact that I put too many ch too many of my Rodian Slingers on this wing, so that his Archers can eat, can um, hit me on the flank, hit my Rodian Slingers on the flank with his Archers. I think he's doing so right now. Uh, let's see. No, no, yeah, he's just talking my Cretans. Yeah, and apparently, um, Julius is sending, attacking me with his light cav. Very, very, very aggressive move. Very good move by his part. And I'm trying to do the same with my light cav in response. I really, at this point in the battle, I should not be losing the missile fight, fight like this. Right now, I'm losing the missile fight. I really don't need to, I really don't want to lose the missile fight, actually. Because my missiles, uh, actually, um, I have better missiles than he does. That he does. So right now, I'm trying to save these Cretan archers from his harassing movements with his um, with his with his cavalry units. And you can see here that he's trying to take take out those Rodian slingers. And I'm trying to take out his archers, but he does a much better job than me because he has those heavy calves, and I, I just have these regular light calves, so I can't do much. So, zooming out a bit, you can see here that Julius is definitely surrounding me very badly. Um, he's surrounding me on all all sides, actually. So I'm just stuck in the middle, waiting for him to make the moves. Because to be honest, if you're if you have a faction with um with more cav with definite cav superiority, you should be pretty offensive with those cav. Take advantage of those cav and launch a lot of harassing strikes. Because in the um, skirmishing phase, it really skirmishing phase really relies on quick strikes with with cav. So obviously the person with um, the cavalry superiority will have the advantage. You can see uh, I'm sending in my militia cav out, attacking his archers in this flank. Boom! I just rattled that unit of archers. I'm pretty successful with that actually. One of the good things you see me do in this battle. I also managed to take down the chariot archer unit, route it, and it goes bye bye. I believe it comes back from routing though, so that's a shame. Oh wait, do I destroy it? I think maybe I destroy it. Yeah, I destroy that cav unit. So right now, um, it looks like the the archer fight is, uh, I'd say it was balanced because I still have these Rodian Slingos left. Although my Cretan Archers are pretty much decimated at this point. You know, I, I really should have sent my Cretan Archers back here to take advantage of the range. But you can see here that um, Julius' Archers, no, oh, never mind, they aren't, they aren't attacking me. So it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, um, still Julius' Chariot Archers here are firing at my, um, I think the um, either either at my Cretans or Rodian Slingers. Yeah, it looks like Rodian Slingers. So I'm lose I'm losing Rodian Slinger casualties, and it looks like my guys are stupidly attacking these Cappadocian Cav. Oh man, 
Yeah, um, you really, ha when you're playing a battle, you really have to pay attention to your dudes and make sure they attack the target that you want to be attacked. Like, make sure that they, make sure if you're using archers that they target the enemy archers or enemy, um, chariot archers. Because here, I make a pretty dumb move for my militia cab because, um, it, you want to play aggressive, aggressive with your light cab, but, um, you don't want to be reckless with them because, because, um, I charged my light cab essentially at his archers which were heavily defended so my militia cab paid the price and lots of these dead men yeah those dead men here they're really mad at me from hell but oh well they're just computer generated nonsense people so they, they can't attack me in real life so if you look around the battlefield you'll see that my light cab force is essentially dead the all been they're all basically dead trying to take out these archers however in contrast um, Ju Julius or you can see here that he named himself Luc Lucas instead um, Julius essentially um, kept all his light cav and right now he's preventing my Cretan archers from getting closer by positioning his light cav in a very threatening manner <laughs> just standing here just saying hello to my guys yeah this is um I could shoot his men, but I really don't want to because I don't want to waste my missiles on these guys. But yeah, this is this is a good move for him to just place his light cab up here because it prevents my long-range archers from getting into range of his regular archers. And you can see at the same time, oh, looks like he's making a Cappadocian charge. I put my phalanxes here. He retreats. Very good micro by him. And you can see him. I'm I try to run my light. My remaining light cab, they're running for the little puny little lives here. Oh, looks like um, he made another charge up my Rodian slingers, managed to rout them. Y yeah, when you're using a hoplite, fa hoplite faction to defend your archers, you have to be really, really quick on your micro. And you have to pay attention a lot because, be because hoplites are way slower than cav, and cav can easily attack um, archers. Um, and any other weak points. So essentially at this point in the battle, Julius is just sending his chariot archers to go ahead and whittle my dudes down. He just wants to whittle his my dudes down so that he doesn't have to use his archers to attack my dudes. Essentially he's avoiding a direct um Archer on archer, archer on archer battle, and instead just sending his chariot archers in. Oh, look at that dude! That, that those dudes just fell. Um, he's essentially just um, using his chariot archers just to kill my archers, essentially. So his his regular archers don't have to um, get damaged because he needs those regular archers to um, to kill my hoplites in late game phase. So right now I'm forming this little new box. Oh man, this little new box in the middle here. Um, there's not much I can do actually. You can't blame me. I mean, if I just rush my dudes out here, he he just um, if I just rush my dudes out here, he'll just re withdraw his Pontic Light Cav, his Cav. Harass me on the flanks and harass me at any weak point, so um, I, I personally think it's just better to sit still. And I'm trying to target his chariot archers because with my Rodian slingers because um I need to kill this chariot archer. You know, I think I kill it. I mean, no, it only has one chariot left. Can't be that difficult to kill that one chariot. You can see that his capital should cap just sitting here taunting my hoplites just saying hello and my hoplites are just waving back saying hello in return and now at this point he's sending his um, bronze shields on my flank which is a good move since he's positioning his regular archers on this flank so that I have it, it'll compel me to face his 
infantry and at the same time he could send his archers to shoot my guys from behind and you can see uh, while I'm moving my um, hoplites he sends his Captain Ocean Cav out and attack me which is a very good move because he's aiming at my archers and hopefully he wants to destroy these remaining archers yeah he's taking advantage of any weak points I have in my army you can see I have like two units of light cav yeah it's not gonna do much against his, uh, his cav force and you can see my my small number of Cretan archers attacking his archers just giving out a little um, archer battle and setting my light cav in that's a pretty dumb move actually I'm actually surprised it didn't rout I'm setting in my hoplites in return just to hopefully attack them uh, I didn't put these guys in phalanx formation so not really I didn't get a lot done yeah I'm setting a combination of my armored hoplites and my militia cab out to attack his troops I think I managed to route this archer unit with like one guy nah I didn't manage that apparently there's like one archer unit right here consisting of one guy lucky dude Anyway, you can see here that I'm his his um, bronze shield is setting up to attack my dudes, while my um, while my hoplites are doing the same. But unlike his hoplites, my hoplites are getting harassed constantly by these calf strikes and these archers, because these archers just fire the ba fire at the back of my hoplites. That'll do a lot of damage, actually. Yeah, at this point in the battle, I have a minor infantry advantage, but th that's not saying much. Anyway, he's approaching his bronze shields out in a phalanx and phalanx engagement. However, I believe he makes some um, pretty good maneuvering with his bronze shields in order to outflank my um, armored hoplites. You can see here, he's sending his he's sending his um bronze shields in someone of an outflanking maneuver and I really don't want to go up against that oh look at uh look at those dudes they're being shot in the back so I'm retreating my hoplites out on this flank I believe that compels him to phalanx roster sensorly so essentially I send some of my hop I send two of my hoplites in to attack his bronze shields I should be able to win that fight. Then I send my other hoplite units in reserve so that I could um so that I could be able to counter his maneuverings. So every time he outflanks my dudes, I have another hoplite in unit in return in reserve to attack his outflanking troops. See here, he he hammered anvils my armored hoplites right right there. Uh, that's a good move by him because I wasn't. I wasn't protecting that area very well. So you can see here that even though my guys are statistically superior, his archers are shooting at the backs of my infantry and his cav are constantly doing hammer and anvil strikes on the back of my infantry. Like you can see there, my general unit just got smushed by all those cav. And I really had to save my general, so I sent in this um, armored hoplite unit. It's not doing much, maybe kills like one or two horsemen. And then Julius quickly um, retreats all of the rest of his horsemen. Very good move by him. And you can see here, my general is acting like a true hero he is by running away like a little pansy. Look at him. He's, he doesn't even know which direction to run. It looks like he's running directly at the enemy. He kind of even deserves to die anyway. Anyway, my general gets killed. He gets killed by a charging Cappadocian Cav. And now, essentially, by the combined forces of his infantry, his archers, and his hammer and anvil, um, ca his, his cavalry that's doing hammer and anvils, he manages to destroy my statistically superior armored hoplites. Yeah. I think this battle illustrates the fact that I need to improve my missile, my missile my missiles a little bit more and I need to compensate for Greeks relatively weaker um, I need to compensate for Greece Greeks Greece's weaker hoplites essentially 
because with Carthage, I prefer using Carthage essentially, because Carthage has um, better infantry but weaker weaker missiles. Anyway, this battle is done. Looks like Julius has won this battle. Very good game to him. Very good game. I really had a very good game to him. He played very well in beating the crap out of me in this battle. You're killing all these poor Greeks. Look at those poor Greeks running for little lives. Our enemies have won this battle, but that is not the same as winning a war. Yeah. So good game to my opponent, Total War Rebel Julius. He played a very good match with me. It was actually really fun and really um, what's the word? Really um, panicky, I guess. Anyway, hope you enjoyed watching this.